All right. Welcome, everybody. This is... This fell. We're going to fix it. A little trauma to the to the plaster, but just want to, as a prelude, this is fixable. Okay? And uh, so are squabbles. So the... Uh, Brother Love has contacted us. He's a mystic monk uh, from a charismatic community locally and uh, has asked us to share his message. There's a young priest from our area that's ministering outside of Michigan and is needed strengthening. Nothing wrong with the priest. Everything's fine. But squabbles in the church just uh, amongst the clergy uh, are troubling to him, not what he expected. So, I just want to leave you. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I want to get this here so you can follow along, and then I'll take it away. Squabbles are normal in the Catholic Church, and this is coming from Brother Love. He's asked me to be his voice here. This conversation is to encourage clergy and active ministry to stay and not leave. You know, so we're going to give you a little bit of Catholic history, the short, sweet Sunday uh, evening talk conversation. Perfection is always the goal. Negligence is the standard for behavior. Consider the Jesuits setting up their legal codes in South America. When they came in, the Jesuits came in. You've seen that uh, uh, movie about uh, the, the uh, Aborigines when the Jesuits arrived. There's no legal system. When they set the system up, they can't set up perfection for society. Negligence was the standard that was set up in those legal codes. Now... Short story to strengthen thy brethren, thy brother clergy religious, male and female. This is for a particular person in mind, but it'll it has to do with it has to do with a lot of people. So you know your canonization process is full of squabbles, but let's talk about a particular one for us today. I'm gonna go back to the Middle Ages. There's two friars, two priests, and I believe. I'll try to document this later. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And uh, you can ask your priest to ask their seminary professors uh, to confirm this. But in, the, in uh, I believe it was the University of Paris, it was a papal, it was run and controlled by the Pope. So it's, pretty, it's a Catholic university, totally controlled by the Pope, all populated by diocesan clergy. There are two priests from religious orders. The Pope appoints them to the theology department. And if my memory's right, I think uh, to teach theology in a seminary. Hell, they, they, they have to be accepted and seated by the local community of clergy, diocesan clergy. This is going to be a squabble between diocesan clergy and uh, these two religious uh, priests. But then there's going to be a squabble between these two religious priests. And this is all factual. So I might be a little bit on, the, uh, you know, where's the 1500s, 1300s, you know. But what happens is, is in the meantime, the, uh, as they're getting, they have to be accepted to, to receive their seat, their chair in theology, so they can teach theology. They both have their doctorates. So in the meantime, the one religious order takes the one friar, and elects him as father general. So he gets removed from Paris from the squabble. The other one is staying there. I, I, my memory is going by, I think it's Paris, uh, the University of Paris. So what's happening is these two friars then were fighting or squabbling. The one priest theologian, these are the two that are not accepted. They're, they're, they're out there in the cold not accepted all day. They had received their appointments from the Pope and they're receiving resistance. You talk about strengthening thy brethren. So the one wanted to go and use Aristotle in his theology program. Once he gets seated, he's going to use Aristotle. And the other priest says, oh no, Aristotle is not, is a pagan. Aristotle doesn't have the benefit of divine revelation, which is true. And I would never use Aristotle. The other priest says. Now remember, these guys are squabbling amongst themselves as they're united in their squabble with diocesan priests. Now, if that doesn't set set the frame right, I mean, you can't get any better than that. And this is this is for real. 
And uh, so the one guy is so good, uh, uh, they wait around. I think it took them over a year to get to get seated. Well, the one guy gets called out because they have a general chapter. He's so good, he gets elected as the, the father general of the entire order. And what develops is the other fellow gets seated in the chair, meaning he gets accepted to the Department of Theology. But remember, he was, the argument was, I want to use Aristotle. The contrary was, don't use Aristotle. He's a pagan. He doesn't have the benefit, the light of divine revelation. Now, we're going to benefit from this squabble. That's the whole point, is that for those clergy out there that you see these squabbles, there are benefits to them. Think of this little conversation, and uh, I'll try to perfect it later on, but this is like a fireside chat amongst friends, okay? So the other guy says, listen, that I know Aristotle is a pagan. I know he doesn't have the benefit of divine revelation. That's the whole point. So what do you mean that's the point? The point is, is that it's like a laboratory, a perfect laboratory, pre-Christian, Aristotle, can prove that the human intellect created by God can reach uh, uh, the, the conclusion that God exists. Let me repeat that. Aristotle found uh, uh, was a philosopher who did not have, was not, obviously was, did not believe, couldn't believe it was before Christ, didn't have divine revelation, and reached the conclusion through just human intellect, logic, philosophy, that God exists. And, and uh, the theologian that stayed said, I find great value in that. And the theologian that left said, well, I'm not going to do it. But remember, you know these two people. The theologian that left, I believe, was a Franciscan Bonaventure. The theologian that stayed was Aquinas. And Aquinas has built great, part of his work uh, is on Aristotle on, uh, on the, pay, the power of philosophy to achieve the argument that God exists. You see how that is? So squabbles can provide fruits that, that we can't see. God is full of surprises. So, you know, super glue, some type of glue is going to put this, this statue back, going to put our Jesus back together that's been traumatized. But you just got to let, 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 let people be heard. And we're going to work on that. We're going to put that together. And... Uh, conversation. Here you would think that's a pretty strong argument. Why would I want to bring in a, a pagan who ha doesn't have divine revelation? Arist uh, Aristotle. Bonaventure was against it. Now in the meantime, these diocesan priests lost out. And, we, and, and thank God for that because uh, uh, Thomas Aquinas received his chair in theology and uh, we are the benefit of some of his work. Uh, and so think about that. And everybody who is ordained, it's part of their curriculum, is to uh, learn about Thomas Aquinas, known as the Seraphic Doctor, uh, uh, and think about all the squabbles. Don't leave active ministry. I know a lot of you uh, feel that you're not supported by the culture, you're not supported by the laity, and you're gonna, God, you gotta feel like Aristotle. You gotta feel like Bonaventure. Bonaventure then had this, you remember there's always, it's, it's common knowledge that he wanted to do more, but he had to deal with governance issues, you know. What a bright intellect, and he was slowed down, and he had to deal with the governance issues of the Franciscans. And the Franciscans, every time they got a squabble, they, they split, and they're all Franciscan, but the Franciscans of the Renewal, the Franciscans of this, the Franciscans of that, are like 1,200 different Franciscan branches, you know, but they're all Franciscan and Catholic. So poor Bonaventure, I'm going by memory. I'm pretty sure it's Bonaventure, but we'll double that up. Squabbles can produce. Uh, God, let God in. And in the Catholic Church, squabbles are normal. You know, you think of that, that song about uh, Hank, why do you roll smoke? Hank, why do you get drunk? And Hank says, Hank says, uh, it's a family tradition. Remember, squabbles are a family tradition going right prior to Christ, you know, so hang in there is, you know, it's difficult. There are, you're not going to have, uh, I'll do a separate talk on um, adequatio 
and the part that Descartes played. But if you want to strengthen your brethren, it doesn't mean that you just sauce. There is no squabbles. It doesn't mean that you just, everything is sugar-coated and candy cane and all that stuff. Squabbles have benefits. You know, you don't have to throw stones at every dog that barks at you, okay? You don't. And uh, we'll go into that. But remember, strengthen your brethren. I hope this helps. Uh, Brother Love has, has asked that we address it, and I hope I'll be measured in my performance that I meet uh, 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 the standards that Brother, I hope I do justice to what Brother Love has asked that we do and that you're strengthening and helping somebody out there. But right now, there's a priest that is, uh, we're not talking about any depression. We're not talking about any type of uh, organic issue. We're just talking about frustration with uh, squabbles and uh, the lack of support in ministry and the, conf the conflict that, you know, I have to be perfect, okay? And if I'm perfect, I can't engage in a squabble. Well, there's an example of you. Bonaventure is a saint. Aquinas is a saint, and they engage in squabbles. Let, let me add ad lib here if I can. Um, it's called the uh, Quad Libital Lectures, me meaning there is a, I don't know exactly what city it is, but there was a building, and on the outside of the building, Portico, there was an, uh, something where he would, uh, Thomas Aquinas would go up and preach and talk to the people at the intersection in the streets. It was an intersection. These weren't all Catholics, and they weren't all accepting. And he would, uh, like, hide, par like, uh, what's that park in London where you get you stand on a soapbox? That's what he's doing. He's not into some. He did not. We have this idea that it's all uh, warm and fuzzy. He's taken Catholicism, and he's taking it and delivering it in the raw right to people who are in the intersection commercing, and he would, he would, be at that building. It's on the outside of the building. That's, uh, that uh, it's not an altar, but it was. It would allow him to go out and reach out and talk to people in the public. That's pretty powerful. And I think it's the quad liberal to me means disputed matters. And he would he would want to engage in disputed matters to try to draw out uh, the light of Christ and the light of logic and reason. So, so don't uh, you doesn't mean you have to be the squabbler. Okay. But don't be put off by that. So many people think that uh, are put off like that. Uh, Catholicism is unmatched in our history. We're unmatched in our experience. It's just, it's been, for lack of a better term, it's just not known. You know what I mean? We, who would think that uh, Bonaventure and, and uh, Aquinas, are, the diocesan priests won't, won't seat them? The, you know, a part of it is that it probably gives them access so that their religious order will have access to benefices like money or uh, people want to sponsor them or something like that. And the diocesan priests aren't having it. So, hey, welcome to Catholicism. So this is our little conversation. I'd love to have uh, some of you in here, but my technology won't allow it. Uh, if you see Brother Love up there on, on Mount Morris on the North Slope, He's part of the mystical charismatic community there. You you put in a good word for me. Tell him that I tried. And if I didn't make it, we'll take another shot at it. And I do have the authority somewhere. But, uh, and, and uh, I welcome criticism. Okay, but remember, active ministry is difficult. You don't have to please everybody. You don't have to argue with people. If complaints come, you know, you... You don't have to throw stones at every dog that barks. And remember Aquinas, he thought there was great value in that dispute. You know, he's trying to persuade Bonaventure. He's in there and he does use, he does use Aristotle. And remember, there's this, this things happen. Things get broken and then they have to be put back together. Oh my God, it's not Catholic because it's broken. Is that, if this statue is separated, does it mean it's not broken? Does it mean it's no longer Christ? It just means it's got to be fixed. It's got to be, you know, just as material fractures, so do relations, so do concepts, but there's benefit. There's great benefit in squabbles, and we'll develop that later. So this is the, uh, I hope that takes care of everybody. Amen. All right, Teresa's praying for us, so I hope it went over well. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.